Well, this is going to be kind of an interesting upload that I'm doing here this morning. I'm uh, having my cup of witch's brew here. I want to show you something. This is some Thailand tea. And this is what's making this dark green color here. I mean, immense. When you just put it in hot water, the water just turns. If you put Lipton tea, I do a combination. The water will become colored but will not have that deep hue of color that the Thailand tea, which is a bigger packet, but it's more concentrated leaves. Okay, so judging a book by its cover, you'll say, okay, this Lipton tea bag right here, it's going to give you this really heavy brew. It's going to give you a lot of the antioxidants and everything. But when I put this bag, but the, what's the problem with this Thai tea? Problem is that those, they actually add sugar to this more than you need and Lipton tea doesn't have any sugar but you're going to get this robust color here and flavor immediately when you put this little brew together and I add of course black pepper and turmeric to this for a reason and that's my morning brew but speaking of morning brew let's begin with our morning brew okay um, examining and going back to the annals of time as I call it there was something called YouTube that I got involved with. And it was strictly for entertainment, but it was also to kind of share my experience uh, in ways that nobody ever has emotionally and very open about from the very first day that I ever actually came to the Philippines. How it was overwhelming a little bit, the culture shock, and so and to a certain point, it still is, but not of course, like when I first came out here. Now, little did I know I'd be spending my life out here in the Philippines, and a lot of people found themselves in that position. They came to the Philippines, and, you know, maybe it's just going to be for vacation, but they met somebody, their whole life changed, and hey, well, uh, there you are. Now you're living and thriving in the Philippines. So what does living and thriving mean, living in the Philippines? Let me tell you something about a lot of retirees, such, such as myself. The reality is, not all retirees are either healthy enough, limber enough, have enough energy and enthusiasm to be traveling all over the Philippines. There could be a, a monetary aspect to this, but the reality is, and it's always been a topic on here, is that the climate is not very conducive to wanting to get around too much. Now, some people are very complacent and they're happy where they are. They make a trip now and then. And that's kind of the direction we're in. Um, but you kind of find your niche out here in this country. And face the fact, you can't fight Mother Nature. If you're getting older and you don't have some of the abilities and agility and so forth that you did when uh, you were a younger man. So when a lot of people are thinking, oh, yeah, you know, this guy's traveling here, he's traveling there. A lot of them are a lot younger. Let's look at Tim K. And we're going to mention names. Well, not really. Only if it's necessary. Uh, people get on YouTube and they want to create a social network is what they do. Most foreigners, they're still kind of stymied by the fact that I'm not living in my, uh, my own country anymore. And they have, there's a lot of adjustments you have to make. And, and sometimes you can't even make a full adjustment after how many years you've been here. It, it takes a lot of effort. No matter how much you try, it's still not like being home. So you have to adjust to things like the culture, uh, belief systems, religious systems, uh, crazy political things out here, you know, no, no divorce. And, uh, even a lot of rituals out here are so different from Western culture. But that's what you're exposing yourself to. You make that decision to come out here, good or bad. We have people out here that are living in Thailand, no names mentioned, but they spend all their time on the Philippines, you know, vlogging uh, uh, genre, uh, which goes to show you, no matter how much money somebody might have, they become really complacent to where they are. But you would think if you're living in Thailand, why are you so interested in the Philippines? Why don't you just move to the Philippines? Okay, that's, that's a good question, uh, an unanswered question. You could have all the money in the world, and you're still going to find yourself, if you're really kind of a, you know, pasted, 
to social media, you're going to find yourself uh, still spending a lot of your time on social media. Because the fact is, although you've made a certain adjustment to the country you decided to move in, you're still not where you were born and raised and the culture you were raised in, the values and the political system, medical system, all that stuff. It all kind of meshes together. And it's always there. It's always in the back of your mind. And it's always an issue. What if something happens to me out here? Do we got insurance? Do we got money in the bank? There's so many considerations you have to make when you live in the Philippines. So a lot of people take to social media and you say, well, why are they gravitating in such a heavy way to social media? Because it's their way of connecting to other people of the same that come from Western cultures mostly. And they find it, uh, I don't know, it's kind of an inane need to still reconnect with English speaking people and people who maybe understand where you come from because they've experienced your culture. They come from your culture in the Western world. And that's why people will come on YouTube. But you get a certain amount of people on YouTube that they're so enamored with the, uh, the gossip and chismis and all that that's going on that becomes part of their life, their very being. And a lot of these people maybe are not doing things that they should be. But let's consider, what, do you, what should you be doing living in the Philippines? Well, that's kind of a complicated question. You do whatever you can within your ability. Um, are you very mobile? Are you agile? Do you actually love traveling? Do you have a lot of patience? Can you handle the extreme, and I underline that word, the extreme weather conditions here in the Philippines? There's a lot of reasons why people may not travel a lot in the Philippines. Unless there is something specific and very specific about a particular location that you want to go to because it offers something, uh, I don't know, geologically, geographically, or I don't know, aesthetically, that you find to be really alluring. So you'll make your trip and then you wind up finding out that, well, yeah, this has some niceties to it, but was it worth all the traveling I did in the hot, humid weather to get here when I already lived near a beach? So I haven't done a lot of traveling. It's not that I don't have the finances to do it, but we recently made a trip and uh, I was very happy to break the cycle. And uh, I'm not saying where we went, but we broke the cycle. But it's what is your own personal requirements for living out here? That's what it really comes down to. Do you have this inert need to travel from here to there, to and fro? And, you know, what is your objective? Okay, what keeps you back, perhaps, from doing it? Well, in my situation, um, being a very responsible person that I am, we have two children here to take care of. Can't leave them alone because they're underage. We have two dogs to take care of. We just can't up and leave unless we have a family member of, of the proper age that can be here to watch the dogs and, and two of the children that actually live here. So there are obstacles in our way for doing, you know, traveling. Sure, we go back and forth to Cebu, but even that cannot be accomplished without somebody watching two children and two dogs taking care of the house. So there are limitations a lot of limitations sometimes that disallows you from going here and going there and doing this and accomplishing that, you know. Um, you know, I uh, come from a different era and I was talking about the wedding and I was seeing this extraordinary state-of-the-art photographic equipment. It just blew my mind. You gotta remember, I come from an era of film photography, which is what I call real photography not operating a camera where everybody and their grandmother could. But that's not totally true either. There's some very complicated cameras. You've got to understand the mechanics and the, the technical aspects of the cameras. And I've seen some with totally separate screens mounted above for doing remote broadcasting. There's so many features. There's a slave unit they have on here so that you want to use a flash. And you could have a flash go off on a, on a tripod from a considerable distance away not being tethered to the camera. I, I've seen all this equipment, and a lot of the times it's Chinese to me because uh, 
I grew up in a whole different era. Was I a good photographer for my time? Yeah, I was actually. Did I enjoy what I was doing? Absolutely. If you knew the amount of time I used to spend doing people pictures, I loved character pictures of people. I spent a lot of time in different places, and I have traveled across the United States. I spent a lot of time taking a lot of my best stuff, of course, in New York. But um, you know, it was a hobby that I just. If you've seen how much involved I was with this. You say, "Wow, I really did have a goal. I really did have an enjoyment. I really did have a hobby slash semi-professional、uh, that turned into a few bodies of work that were held in a very esteemed place for all to see for long after I'm dead. Photographs in the magazines, different things like that. So there were accomplishments in photography, but I, I gotta admit that in present day, I see these cameras. I'm saying, 'Damn, I could be creative. Would it be nice to be creative on a YouTube channel?'" And actually, create, get the right equipment together, learn how to edit, and you know, do like some outrageous outrage. I have the capability, other than my editing, if I really wanted to be serious about, you know, not like leaving the camera on when I thought it was off or off when I thought it was on, making bugaboos like that. If I was to be a lot more careful or watching my grammar. Because I don't have my glasses on, or I was just quick to type. I'm a one-finger typer, so a lot of people that think that Frank can't spell, well, that's so far from the truth. I just peck away at the、uh, at the keyboard, and、uh, whatever it turns out to be, it turns out to be. If you can't figure it out, sometimes I'll correct it later on, or I just say fuck it. You know what I'm talking about. But、um, I have the capability of being extremely creative, doing a YouTube show. If I had the energy and willpower to actually do it. Had the editing skills, I, I'd be,、uh, I, I'd be killer. I'd be killer. Some people get their success on YouTube because of who they know. Let's give an example. We could mention names on here. Let's look at Tim K. Looked at a recent show. He did something 19 hours ago. 16,000 plus viewers. You heard right. 16,000 plus viewers. How did he accomplish that? Is it because he's such an interesting character? Well, that's questionable. He's interesting in certain ways, but it started off. He knew Harold Balder and appeared in some of Harold Howard ha,、uh, Harold Balder's videos, okay, and therefore a lot of、uh, Harold Balder's people came over to his channel, which sparked it off. Then it, of course, was Chrissy. Chrissy was the icing on the cake. Now to achieve what Tim K has is nearly impossible. But it comes down to several factors: who you know, which show did you appear on? Did somebody find you for some reason interesting in some way that they wanted to, you know, go subscribe to your channel? But the, you know, the, the piece of resistance is that when he got his girlfriend on there, and、uh, we know how that works on YouTube. Put your girlfriend on there, and you're going to attract a lot of people. Then you know, there's a lot of blunders that Tim K has made, and. Very clearly has made. Then there's this question of where his relationship is, and he likes to spend more time away from her and the Philippines than that he can, and he likes to do traveling. Well, Tim is young enough to do traveling, and he obviously has an income source other than his parents,、uh, and he does make、uh, probably a considerable amount of money on his YouTube show. But how did he achieve all this? Is this just a fluke?、Uh, In a way, it was kind of a fluke, but it, it, it's how the pieces of the puzzle came together. The elements of his girlfriend, the elements of knowing Harold Harold Balder, and some people get success on their shows. But what happens is, as it actually happened with mine, I don't have all the subscribers and all that stuff. We're going to get to like where we are with this right now and why my channel is only showing like 80 subscribers, whatever the hell it is. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute.、Um, just give me a few minutes on this. And get my train of thought back again. You know,、uh, what you put out on your channel can attract a lot of viewers, but you got to have the right elements on there. And somebody do cheat sheets. They do a lot of baiting. I mean, Tim K has done a lot of baiting. You'll get people like Jasper in the Philippines, who's over like what is he, thirty thousand now? He's only been here about a year. It's because he uses pictures of Filipinos with big boobs on his、uh, on his thumbnail. Okay. And it's not that this guy has a lot of knowledge that he's willing to share about the Philippines. The guy is a newbie. He's a he's a greenhorn. 
okay. But he's smart enough to know certain elements that's going to get viewers. Okay, create a little bit of drama. Oh, that always works. No? <laughs> of course it does. Drama. Drama, drama. You got a good looking girl. No, uh, me, baby, being on somebody else's channel and they discovered you. Uh, but having a good looking girl or a young girl, okay, or create drama and, you know, like they say, build it and they shall come. And that's what YouTube is all about. And that's why Tim K has so many viewers. There's always downfalls to people. There's always downfalls to their channel where some people, some people get carried away and they want to create a little bit too much drama to bring people to their own channel. Again, it's a cycle to bring people to their channel to get more views and subs and all that stuff and donations. They figure, well, hey, stuff I'm doing is pretty goddamn hateful and I'm going to try to piss somebody off as much as I can, but that's going to attract viewers to their channel at all costs. We've got a guy sitting in jail because he got carried away from all this and his future does not look very bright. Well, firstly, because he's not a very bright person to begin with. We can start with that. But he's now paying the price. There's always a price to pay on YouTube. Okay, let's start with me. Came on very innocently and then, of course, certain people came on that didn't like me and it's just, you know, like a disease that spread and it's festered. And people that didn't even know me were saying, yeah, this guy's a bad guy. Let me join your side and let's attack him. That's all it was. I had a good show from day one. People know that. They still follow me today. And it's not just because of the drama, although drama does create a certain level of attraction to somebody's channel. And because somebody, so many people are talking about you, they get drawn to your channel. Every little thing that goes on in your life, they actually sit there. Now, okay, now this has to do with retirees. We're still on that topic, and, and we're going to discuss this, and we're going to segue into that right now. Uh, the fact is, they're in the Philippines, they're retired, and they're spending a god-awful amount of time on YouTube. And they have that time where they, you might hear some people saying, well, Frank stays home in his living room. Uh, well, I'm in the house. I certainly do go in my living room, and it certainly does have air conditioning. And when it's 90 degrees to 105 outside, I would think that's a logical place that you want to be if you could afford a split air conditioner and have a comfortable room, which is a family room, basically. That's where most time I spend and, and, and the members of the family. We call it our family room. It's a living room, but it's a family room. It's where we all gather. Even the damn dogs take advantage of the air conditioning and the gathering of the family. This is very atypical of any foreigner living out here. That they're not out doing as much activities that you think that they're doing. They try to portray themselves or paint a, a picture of, oh man, I'm doing this, I'm going here, I'm doing that, my life is full of this, full of that. Okay, you might have one guy that goes out scuba diving, but he really goes out anywhere else. You got one guy that lives in a shack who really leaves it, except to go to town occasionally and... Uh, you know, basically his whole life, which has been created by himself. And you got to understand, people create their own situations. That is a particular guy, we don't have to put out names on here, lives in a very, uh, a very unsanitary, unhygienic place. A very small, even for one man. And uh, no real friends. No, not really. And his only friends are people that are on YouTube. Sometimes, sometimes you got to reach out to people. And I will understand that, according to where these people are coming from, I fully will understand that, that as a human animal, a social animal that we are, uh, although some people have very anti-social aspects to their personality, but you need to reach out to people. Hey, I'm reaching out right now. I'm doing a show, right? The same thing. But what level? That's the question. What's the comparison? Okay. Um, some people, their whole life is YouTube. They have to talk somebody on the phone from YouTube. They have to Skype somebody. They have to do even up to six hour shows to keep them company all day because they are so absolutely lonely. Well, that's a bad scenario to live in the Philippines, to be in a situation like that. Fortunately for me, I got family around me, okay? And it is a very fortunate situation for me. And uh, I'm loving every bit of it. If I have to be away from my country, 
then I want to be comfortable in a different country in every way I can. You know, living in a nice abode, having certain amenities that some people don't have, okay? It doesn't mean I'm wealthy, it just means that I can allocate a certain amount of funds to provide the creature comfort that I need. I'm not living a Filipino life out here. I'm living with Filipinos in my family and the people that surround our life, such as friends and acquaintances, neighbors, and so forth. You are living in this culture, so you have to be part of this culture, or you will never survive out here. It will never work out for you. You know, and if you make a lot of enemies of Filipinos out here, that's even worse. You live here. You got to adjust yourself to the idea that, hey, I decided to make a decision to move to a foreign country. And as such, I got to, you know, as much as some of the culture might be a little bit wackadoodle to you, uh, discomforting or just bizarre, it's not your culture. That's the bottom line. You can talk about it. You can express your feelings about it. But at the end of the day, you're living out here. And if you want to be comfortable, you're going to have to socialize with Filipinos. And we do on a greater level than most people don't know. We have people that come over here all the time, you know. And uh, it was actually an honor to have a personal invitation to a wedding where we just weren't part of the audience out there and in the pews. We participated down the aisle. That's a big honor to a Filipino couple to invite you out here. That means you are part of my community, my friends. We are accepting you as a foreigner. I was the only white face in that place, if you want to know the truth. The only non-Filipino there. I wore the attire that everybody else did. I blended in with the culture. I accepted what the values were culturally as part of a ritual of marriage from a Filipino couple all the way down to the pants, shoes, and shirt that's traditionally used. And to have to sit through hours and hours of ritualistic, go, 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 tell the dog to go in the other room, ritualistic things you have to go through during a wedding. It's part of the culture. You accept it. It doesn't mean you have to have a total belief system in any culture other than your own that you came from. But you have to understand strongly and listen carefully. If you're living out here, don't get into trouble. And if you decided to get very involved with social media, okay, you put your foot out. It's liable to get, you know, get stepped on in a big way, as some people found out. And you're not going to blend in. If you feel that you are above the law, if you feel that the, Fili uh, the Philippines government don't give a shit about Americans and they won't prosecute you because you're just a couple of dopey Americans fighting with each other. Well, obviously we know that to be not true because the Philippines government does care about the crimes that you commit out here. It's a long process if you decide that you don't like somebody out here. They've done something that was so, it was such a degenerate person that they did something that was you know, so horrible that you found that you couldn't sit back anymore and just let it happen. We don't want to go through that scenario. I don't want to go through that. But I found in two occasions, actually three, that I had to go through that. Sometimes you have to do things that are uncomfortable to you, that's going to cost you money. But, you know, when you adhere to your own values and morals and so forth, and somebody steps over the boundary of uh, your morals and what you're willing to accept, uh, people talking about your partner and all that. Uh, I got a big surprise for some people that I'll share in the future as far as our relationship here, where it's going and where it's been, actually. Big surprise someday that maybe we'll discuss that with you. Okay, but that's not the time to do it. Oh, it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's nothing bad. It's actually very good. But let me tell you something. You're going to go on social media on here. All eyes and ears are on you. So, you know, dot your I's and cross your T's and all that crap, because people are listening. Not only are they listening, they're recording everything you say. Now, let me tell you a little trade secret here. I knew from day one, well, not from day one, that's, that. no, not from day one, let me correct myself. Later on, I figured out that there are going to be people that like you and don't, for whatever reason it might be. It could be somebody says something about, 
bad about you, and other people kind of adhere to that thought that maybe you were this type of person. Henceforth, an army was built against you, and it just got bigger and bigger. And we've seen that not just with me, but we've seen that with a lot of people out here, haven't we? No, we sure have. It's still ongoing with people on here. That's part of the responsibility of being on YouTube and having a YouTube channel. People are watching and listening. They're there with the pen in hand, ballpoint in hand. They're making notes. They're they got their premiere uh, application on there, and they're recording everything you say and everything you do. And they're underlying and editing certain points of things you said on your show, and they're turning it around. Some people do that. They turn it around and make you look even worse. And maybe it's something you said that wasn't bad at all, but they have a way of turning it around, making it sound like something. But you are going to have to realize that's part of responsibility of being on YouTube. Now there are some people that go way, way out of their way to get noticed. Well. Okay, getting noticed means well. Okay, perhaps you're going to get more viewers, you're going to get more subs, but it's the way you go about it. Do you really want to get viewers and subs in that way? Honestly, do you really want to go in that direction? Because it ultimately turns on. Well, come on, we see it go on all the time. It turns on you. All the time, and contrary to what people believe, I, well, first of all, I, I've had my moments on here when I was genuinely pissed off. I've had my moments when I was generally really upset and mad at certain people for things they said. But for the most part, people don't understand. It's been all entertainment for me, and a, a lot of my stuff has actually been choreographed. There are even times that you thought I was genuinely just pissed off. When afterwards, you know, me and my partner look at each other and we just kind of laugh, laugh off what we just heard or what they accused of us of, which of course we knew wasn't true, but that's why we were, you know, getting our little giggles from that. And this has been going on for years. Now, if I really thought, if I really thought that this whole ideology of、uh, doing YouTube shows were really bothered me to the fact that I was actually getting. Really stressed out over some shit. Well, there were times. There were times. There certainly was. But basically, oh,、um, I kind of handled it with kid gloves most of the stuff on here, and、uh, I've had just hours and hours and hours of entertainment from here, because, like I said earlier, my broadcast social media can become an outlet for foreigners living in another country. You need to relate, talk. With English-speaking people, people saying values, perhaps that come from another country, and this is all part of the process of actually living here in the Philippines.、Mm-hmm. Now, it is true what they say: Filipinos are wonderful people. I mean, they literally would give you the shit off their back. I have never had,、uh, and I'm trying to think, never had what I would call a bad experience with Filipinos. Maybe other than maybe somebody overcharging me or something for a, a project at the house. But you know, I had another way of looking at this too. Because if you had to do the same project in America, for example, look how much it would have cost you. And these people are basically a lot of them. Not all. Keep in mind, there's a lot of businessmen out here, a lot of people with money. That you know, thought process that Filipinos are all poor is so far from the truth. But people are doing out here what they can to survive. Even if it means walking in the streets of Cebu selling water. I mean, they're going to do or rags or something. They're going to do whatever they do. They are a, a group of people who are very strong people. They could work in the hot elements. They could do things that nobody would ever would think of doing, just to raise a few pesos to have a meal to buy some rice for the night. There are others that are more successful that have businesses everywhere that are multimillionaires. There's a, you know a broad spectrum of people out here, and it's not that everybody is poor. It's just a visual thing you see out here. And some millionaires they dress down out here. You don't know who's a millionaire. They own lots of hectares of land and businesses. You would not even know it. You wouldn't even know it out here. So a lot of people have a very generalized idea that you know the Philippines is a poor country. It is not a poor country.、Uh, I beg your pardon. It's not. But I think you have a responsibility when you live out here to adhere to the culture, good or bad, however you deem it to be. Good or bad, you have a responsibility 
to be a good representative of foreigners. They're going to decide to live out here because what you do affects other people and how they think of you as a person, as a foreigner. And some people give people of the Philippines a really bad perspective on, you know, what foreigners are all about. They're just here to, to get our women. A lot of them are. And there's nothing wrong with having a woman that's younger than you. But I think, uh, and I'll follow through with this one on that train of thought, that I still feel that, you know, these, I don't know, made in December romances are ridiculous as far as the age gap. I've always felt that. What I've witnessed with my own eyes is just incredible. And uh, the age gap, what do you have in common really? But you know, people, uh, they're gonna do what they wanna do. And if it's a mutual agreement between you and the Filipina, okay, that, okay, the guy says, well, you know, I'll take care of you if you take care of me <laughs> in, uh, you know, carnal ways. Okay, if that's your agreement, that's your agreement. Some guys, and a lot of guys, they, what they want to do is they want to relive their youth. And by getting a woman that's extraordinary younger than him, this is their way of what I call cheating father time. It's their way of laughing at the world, saying, you know what, I can't be 20 years old anymore, but I could sure date a 20-year-old woman here in the Philippines. All right, let's examine that relationship. What is it really all about? You have absolutely nothing in common with a 20 year old. Well, it goes a lot lower than that, but we won't go into that. You know the whole story with that. It's really becomes a business relationship with a lot of people on here. And, you know, if they're both getting what they want, then there's, there's no gripe about that. If your business arrangement is that, well, you're willing to take care of this Filipino, she's willing to take care of you in many different ways. You both agree upon that. Is, then there's nothing wrong with that because that's your agreement well we know it's shallow of course nobody wants to be retirement age and be with somebody just as a business relationship i couldn't deal with that life is too precious and your happiness is too precious to you know resort to that kind of uh, relationship situation i personally can't see doing that we don't have that situation i can speak for myself whether you believe me or not, I don't really give a shit, but I, I'm one of the fortunate few that has a very rare relationship that, you know, I remember the other day, yesterday, sitting in the church, and of course I had to sit separate. The women had to be on the left side, sitting in the pews there, and I had to be on the right side, the men separate from the women. And she was all dolled up and looking really great. And I was looking at her and I, I said to myself, you know, Man, I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky. And we're not talking about looks, we're not talking about that. I looked at her beyond the physicality of who she is and realized that I am so goddamn lucky. No, I'm not crowing here. I'm not trying to crow here. But I could genuinely tell you that, you know, I truly feel that, oh gosh, I always wanted to be using these words. I'm not religious, but I'll use it anyway. I feel very blessed that I got lucky to have what I have. And even her family around me are just good people that really respect me. I got everything I wanted really living in the Philippines that I did not have in America. And a lot of you understand that. Some of you have had nothing in America. I mean, who wants American women? They're all Karens. Gosh, I mean, it's just... It, you know, I see a lot of these Facebook feeds. I see a lot of things on YouTube about Karens. And the women in America are just not the same anymore. I mean, they've always been very greedy. It's a me, 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 what's in it for me world. We all know that, but it goes beyond that now. Now they become all fat, obese, and they got an attitude, and, you know, they all become Karens. And who the hell wants to deal with that? That reason alone is a good reason to move to the Philippines or anywhere else for that fact. You guys all know that. But everybody has their reason for moving out here. Like I've said many times on my shows through the years, you're either running towards something or you're running away from something. There's a lot of people that were running away from things like child support, criminal things, uh, you know, lack of the ability uh, to find and endure, you know, keep a relationship. And a lot of people have reasons why they move to 
to a different country. Unfortunately, they're not always the best reasons for them. The old saying that the grass is greener on the other side does not always apply. As they find out when they move out here, some of us have planned, and I think that's the key word or word planning before you want to move to any country, even other than the Philippines. You've got to plan it out. If you're living on a Social Security, is that going to be enough to satisfy your lifestyle? Now, maybe you've led a very extravagant lifestyle while you were back in America or wherever you hail from. But that changes when you move to the Philippines, when you find yourself just living on your Social Security. And maybe, maybe your Social Security, which maybe is not a company, if you're lucky to have a pension on top of your Social Security, on top of that, a military pension. If you're in that situation, you're doing pretty well. And the only thing that you've got to worry about, okay, you've got the finances together, is your attitude. So no matter what country you wind up living in, it's your attitude that's going to make or break you out here. So a lot of people take to good old social media. And maybe they just weren't able to come to the Philippines. They're pissed off at a lot of people. They're watching all these videos. They're living their life vicariously through other people's YouTube shows or Twitter or anything else, Facebook and so on, TikTok now and other applications. And it's just not seemingly able to achieve what other people have achieved out here. And they're pissed off and they're miserable and they find themselves to be alone and they're, you know, the inflation going on out here, like it's going on all over the world is interfering with their ability to do the things that they would like to do, travel or, you know, be able to even have a woman out here. Because, you know, let's face it, a lot of the women, because look, if you are a successful woman, chances are you may not want a foreigner. Okay, but let's face the fact that every Filipina, I don't care who they are, inclusive of mine, they want to step up in life and you can't blame them. And no, my woman never lived in a shack, okay, as somebody made a comment on there. She never lived in a shack, okay. But getting beyond that, um, you can't blame them. If you were born into, not necessarily poverty. Poverty really is an implication of uh, finance, really. That you're not, well, it's actually poverty, actually, the, the real definition of that is that you're not eating very well. You're impoverished in that respect. But they're not all impoverished. All Filipinos eat very well out here, I think. It may not be all the foods that they want to eat on some of the poorest families, but they always, they're always eating. They always find a way. A neighbor, a friend, a family member is always going to help them out. That's the beauty about the Philippines. They do take care of each other, especially family. But if you move out here as a foreigner and uh, you're living on limited income and then you have to find yourself begging on social media, you made the wrong mistake, clearly. So that winds up getting you into trouble, then you're being labeled as an e-beggar. Buy me this, buy me this toy I want, you know. Or buy me the food, buy me the alcohol and cigarettes that I need. You don't want to accept the responsibility of your journey to live in another country, that what's involved with that. That's your bad, that's your bad, and then you find yourself in situations that get you into trouble all the time, which makes your existence in the Philippines intolerable. And then there's really no reason to live out here anymore. And we've had numerous people that are doing that as we speak, that are living miserable lives, and they're showing their misery by transmitting all their misery and sharing it with other people on YouTube. And they're attacking people, and sometimes for no reason at all. Boy, we've seen a lot of that, haven't we? That doesn't go on on YouTube, does it? <laughs> no, never happened. But it actually does. So you got to make these conscious decisions if you want to live out here. What are the reasons you want to live out here? Okay, some of you claim that you have money, but you're living in another country, but you come in the Philippines genre. What's happening with that? Are you not satisfied with the country that you're living in and you want to go in the Philippines vlogging genre? You're supposed to have all this money, but what do you do? Because you spend a majority of your time. You know when every show is on. You're there to listen to every live show that's going to be on here or upload. What do you do with your time? Don't you have a partner that you're spending time with? You're supposed to have all this money, but yet you're on there and you're, you know, you're getting involved in all the misery of everybody else and trying to create more misery for somebody. When you, what you're actually doing is create misery for yourself because why aren't you traveling around? Why aren't you showing what you're doing with your Filipina? 
that you're so proud of and you got all this money. Why? You're retired. And maybe you used to jet ski, maybe you used to do all these activities, but that was a thing in the past. Now you're sitting on a fat ass, sitting on their fat asses, and they're pointing fingers at people on YouTube saying, you're a bad man, Billy Mumy. You're a bad man. You're a very bad man. Are they really? Or is it just an extension of your personality and, and the, the void that you have in your life? And you want to be miserable to other people on here. Boy, I've said a mouthful this morning, haven't I? I've gone on for 42 minutes on this thing here which we're going to end it right here. Okay, your life out here in the Philippines is going to be what you make of it. And nobody is to judge anybody else as to how they spend their time or how athletic they are or any of those set stuff for, for what it matters. If you're comfortable in your own skin and what you do on a daily basis and you're happy with it, then it's nobody else's business but your own. That's the bottom line. So if you do, speaking of lines, cross these imaginary lines and you do things that are so heinous and make allegations against people that are not true and have proven not to be true and proven that what they say really did happen by ways of what they actually posted on their YouTube shows, on camera, in fact, then they're going to go into a state of denial. I never said that. And AI created that one. Well, AI did create a few things or clever editing has created a few things, even in regards to me, on YouTube. But is it factual? No. Is this just a product of the loneliness and hate and misery that that person is just suffering in their own life? Absolutely. Maybe they're not really happy being out here in the Philippines, or maybe some of them are not even in the Philippines. And they wish they were here, because they think everything is a bowl of cherries out here. They think that life is so grandiose when you live in the Philippines. It's not the way you think it is. Sure, anybody... And if you can't find a woman, I don't care how old, wrinkled, and fat that you are, you know, if you can't find a woman here in the Philippines, you are doing something awfully wrong. Well, okay, some people are forced to buy their relationships, you know. But they, you know, sooner wind up being lonely, living in a tiny little shack, an unhealthy, unhygienic shack, and then they just spew their misery on their channels all the time because that's all they have to do. But they want to speak to a human voice. They need that human voice. Okay, said enough. That's my show. Have a good day. Hope you learned something from this video. Is life good for me out here in the Philippines? I would generally say yes. Would I settle in any other country? No. Would I ever go back to the United States? Not my doing. Not my wants. You get a certain level of comfort where you're living. You make your life as comfortable as you possibly can. And you live out your life despite what anybody thinks about you. Because, you know, who's living your life? You're living your life, not anybody else. So what you have or they think you don't have and whether they think you're miserable in your life or you don't have a good relationship, well, is that the truth? It really has to do with what I'm experiencing or what you're experiencing. Do you have a good life here in the Philippines? Ask yourself that question. Are you so goddamn miserable because maybe you're not living that life that some people out here are living? There's some people living very good lives out here, and I'm one of them. So they can complain and all the rhetoric that goes on in every channel all the time. And they could copy your channel. They could add graphics to it. They could uh, defame your partner, your girlfriend, your wife, your family. But what is that saying about, set, about them in a whole? It says volumes about them. I write this shit off. It is only a few times I've here that I didn't write it off, and I decided to take action because, well, I feel or felt that it was necessary to do so. Henceforth, all the craziness going on YouTube now and all the attacks going on. I can think of somebody in mind, and the only reason they support him is because maybe perhaps they don't like me. But they have to examine the reasons why don't they like me because somebody said something about me that, you know, I'm in a dark place. I'm a dark person. No, none of that is true. And if you ever met me in person, you'd know exactly what I'm all about. And believe me, it's nothing even close what people try to depict about me, my personality, and my life on here. But that's YouTube, and that's a responsibility we all have on being on YouTube.